Well, hello. Let's talk about post-op and pre-op um, before GRS. There's certain things you have to do. I'm going to read you a thing that you have to have done. I wasn't told this. I've been doing electrolysis on my face for quite a while. And when it comes for vaginal plasties done, the surgeon gave me a diagram. I wish I could find the diagram. This one kind of here. It says, remove all the hair from the penile shaft, include one inch area around the base. And it says, remove all hair from scrotum. <laughs> uh, remove all hair from pentium in or order to clear the strip of hair around two and a half inches. So around your penile shaft, they have to go two and a half inches out around, okay? Um, hair removal is suggested but not mandatory. Five cycles of electrolysis or three sessions of laser hair removal is recommended. Complete at least three weeks prior to GRS. In interruptive electrolysis is far is further formed in surgical hair. So they must do something when you're in surgery. With this combination in the vagina is highly unlikely, although possible. So it means you're not going to get the hair to come back. Penal shaft, important. Skin from the penal shaft to the mid scrotum will be utilized to create the new vagina. Thus, the areas most important cleared prior to surgery, remember... To plan ahead, you will need multiple treatments over five to six months, period. Usually three to five clearings for laser, five to eight electrolysis to prior to SRS to permanently, to permit the area heal and recover. Okay, also remember that no matter how well the surgery goes, there will be two scars running along each large labia. These are necessary to cover, covered by the hair, so that the hair on the outer scrotum and the higher than the shaft should be left intact. So that's electrolysis before surgery. I wish I could show you a diagram, what they do. Um, I know I can't, I know this, my camera won't pick it up. But it's hair removal for vaginal plasties. Now, I had the surgery. I, I, I went and met the surgeon. She gave me this paper. It showed the shaft and it showed two inches out around where the penis is connected to the body. You had to remove all that hair. You had to remove any hair that was on the shaft and you had to go two inches out around and plus you had to remove it off the testes. Because they're using all these parts to create all the parts of your vagina and everything. Um, that was quite a head turn. I, <laughs> I met in January and I had surgery in April. Um, after surgery, you have this huge plug put in you. Plugs both sides of this thing, as big as this. It's up inside, it was up inside me about six inches. Um, it goes up into the right, towards my right pelvis. Because like they do with a woman that's had a hysterectomy, they attach the part of her where they disconnect and take all the female organs out. They attach it up towards the right side of the hip. Um, so when I woke up from surgery, because I had all these tubes coming out of me, and I had to lay there. Oh my God, it was at least 48 hours I couldn't move. I was flat, and they had these things on my legs pumping so I wouldn't get a blood clot and all these tubes coming out of me down there. And I remember when Dr. McGinn came in because there was a curtain and she pulled the curtain back and she saw my toes wiggling. And she goes, you're awake? And I says, yeah, why? She says, you know, you got to lay there for 48 hours and you can't move. I understand this is minor to the 45 years of hell it took me to get here. Um, 
So I was listening to Christmas music off my cell phone with my earbuds. And uh, she saw two books sitting on the stand, one that she had written, and the other one was my Bible. And I asked her to sign the one she had written. Um, she said, you know, the anesthesia I gave you would have knocked out a herd of elephants. You shouldn't be awake, not at least till tomorrow. And I said, well, I told you I'm going to come back and see you. <laughs> she says, well, you got to lay there for 48 hours. She says, whatever. So I laid there. Then on the third day, they took the tubes out. I think it was third day. After they took the tubes out, maybe later that afternoon, they tried to stand me up, and I passed out. My blood pressure dropped, and I went out. The next day, they got me up, because this plug, like the size of this thing, is you're sitting on it, because it's up inside you. And it's like, Jesus, that hurts. And, because they don't take the plug out yet. And she got me up, and I had to walk from the bed to the door, back and forth a couple times, and they put me back in bed. Then, I can't remember when they took the plug out. It wasn't too long after that, they took the plug out, and they handed me these two devices. Can you see the dots? Okay. To there. See? And they give you a depth based on what they have to work with for tissue to construct the vagina. Um, I can tell you, if I can get this to come up, where is it? Where's, oh. oh, this isn't the one. Okay. This one across here, is an inch and an eighth. This one is an inch and a quarter. This one is an inch and three eighths. And this one is an inch and a half across there. Uh, I've never used this one. There was no point in using this great big one because why bother? I'm never gonna be with anybody. So oh, I just never opened it up that far. Because when you go big around from here to here, you lose depth. Because they've only got so much tissue to work with. So you open the vagina up more. So the skin pulls back because you've only got so much depth. They give you six inches with this thing. Well, actually, they did this thing because they had this plug up inside me. But as the swelling goes down, you lose depth because everything starts to sweat, shrink again. And so this one would go in six inches because it's smaller. But when I go to this, this is the one I use every three days off and on the fourth day I use this one. Uh, this one goes in almost six inches in me. This one does that much, goes inside me. Um, you have the first the first year my regiment was, back in the day, um, every three hours I had to stick that dilator up inside me. First you're supposed to start with this one for so many minutes and this one. It was no time. I was just using this one. And that's what I did. I stuck this in there for 20 minutes. You, tur you turn it. You put this stuff on it to lubricate it. You slide it in, you turn it, you want it tipped up. So when you slide it in, you slide it in this way, and the curve goes up like towards your stomach. Um, you get it in there to the mark that they gave you for depth. Mine goes to the right, most people's do, because that's the way they attach it, just like a woman's had a hysterectomy. Um, so it goes up and goes to the right, and that curve part goes up like it's coming up towards your stomach. Um, I had to do it every three hours for 20 minutes for the first year. So you're married to this thing, and this is your new wedding partner. <laughs> but the thing is, these support groups talk nothing about this stuff. Nothing. 
They're just going to go have surgery. Nobody says anything. And this stuff is what needs to be discussed in a support group, just like electrolysis and laser. The only permanent, permanent way to get rid of hair is electrolysis. They just said that in one of the articles I was reading. Some people do get lucky with laser, but very few, they end up having electrolysis later down the road. Um, Cause it doesn't work on certain color hair and you might think you've got it, but you'll end up going back and having electrolysis done at some point you will, most people do. Um, so you gotta do that after surgery um, then there's a lot of other things you got to do maintenance wise, like a female does and stuff. Um, this one, this one, <laughs> they don't give you this one. I bought this one. This is six inches long. This one's got ribs. I have a hundred percent sensation inside and TMI, but I do around the clitoris too. Some people don't. I have a little area that I don't have feeling, but I bet I got 98% feeling. Um, it's so different because this is what I always felt. When I had male parts, it just didn't cut the mustard. It wasn't, didn't feel right. But this thing right here, this is six inches long, goes up. The reason why it's curved, it hits a G spot. This bottoms out against your, uh, your vagina and the sensitivity around there. And of course this ribbed one will like sight going up inside. Um, ladies know what that is. And then of course this one I've never used because it's straight, all right? I like the curve one, I wanna hit the G spot, but this one here, this one is straight and ribbed. I don't think I've ever put it up inside me, I'm not sure. It uh, would be good for just opening it up and just turning it and of course the ribs would activate the nerve endings and you, but you need to hit that g-spot oh my god when you hit that g-spot it's like wow women know what i'm talking about um but that's pre that's that's aftercare after surgery so first thing you do like i read you have to have electrolysis there i didn't know that went down in january she handed me that paper. So I called the doctor and I said, is there any type of numbing cream I can put down there? And there is a numbing cream. I use it on my, because it clean up. I have a few hairs right here and a couple here. And I put the numbing cream on a half hour, then another half hour. And then usually within the next half hour, I'm in electrolysis and she's finishing. I don't need it here, but I put it there. We we'll use the same stuff down there, but you wrap it in saran wrap. Because the saran wrap, it gets warm and it numbs it more. But I'll tell you one thing, it don't numb it very well. <laughs> I remember the, the lady that did it, because some like trothers won't do that area. The one I had was a sweetheart in Waterville. And uh, I said, Barbara, I got a project. She says, oh, you've been down to see a surgeon? I said, yeah. I said, uh I need electrolysis down there. She says, I know you do. I said, you do? Yeah. She says, I've done quite a few that's gone for GRS. And uh, so I showed her the paper and because uh, she'd seen one before. <laughs> and I would put numbing cream and we took saran wrap off and it's an eye opener. Uh, first few times, it wasn't too bad. But as it went on more and more, it got more painful. I don't know why, it just did. Cause I went every Tuesday for an hour. So she worked hard down there. Um, it is an eye opener. It, uh, cause that one time she had been working on my face and she looked at me, she saw tears running down. This is when I first started electrolysis and hadn't used any type of numbing cream. And she's working, taking my mustache away and some of this, then she works more here and here, spread it around. And uh, one day there was a tear running down my face because I was getting closer to getting ready to go see the surgeon. And she looked at me and I'll never forget that. She looked in my eyes and she says, 
you really are a girl in there. Because the tears started running out of my eyes. And I told her, I said, I've been trying to tell people that all my life. I really have, Barbara. It just, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't handle being what I wasn't anymore. I couldn't live that lie. And uh, she'd worked on me. Well, she'd done over 200 hours on me. And, because uh, I used to go an hour a week. So I've been, we got to know each other over at least a three hour period, three year period. Um, she is a sweetheart. It's a sensuous electrolysis in Waterville, Maine. She does a lot of trans people. I go now to, I go to, I get this thing to get off the screen. Where is it? I go to, how do I get this to, oh, uh, I go to, where the heck is it? Right here. Whoops, it just disappeared. Stupid computer. I go to a place called About Face Skin Care Salon and Cosmetic Boutique. It's across from the movie theater downtown Damascotter. It's in the V of the building. You park out back in that mall, walk across the street. It's right there. You have to make appointments. They do it all by appointment. Their phone number is 563-3444. Um, they have a website called aboutfacemain.com. Uh, they do manicures, pedicures, facials, waxing, quality skincare products, and massage and electrolysis. Um, it's a mother and da daughter operation. Been there. F she said her mother's been there, I think, 15, 20 years. Been doing that. And then, because her daughter went to school and got a license to do electrolysis, too. So, I go there and have her clean up what's left. I haven't shaved in months. Um... We're almost done, thank God. But this here are the two they give you after surgery. Soul Source is where you buy these. These are, all four are $200. I think they gave me these two. I don't think it was just one. I think they gave me two after surgery because you do this one for so many minutes and then you're supposed to do this one because when you gain width you lose depth so when you do this one you can go way up inside six inches but when you go this one it's not as far this one's a lot less see this there's quite a difference between these two i mean that's the difference but so if i put this one up inside me i won't go in as far maybe five inches maybe but you want to keep your depth, so you got to keep that tissue open, and that's what I have to do for the rest of my life, unless you get a male partner, and then you'd have to have sex at least twice a week, because you can only have three days off, me anyway, or it'll start to heal up from what I've read, from uh, what the doctor told me from surgery, because the tissue they use, it thinks it's injured all the time. And it wants to heal clothes. Why would you go through all this and have your vagina heal up? No way. <laughs> now the way it feels. God. <laughs> Don't laugh. But now that's the thing about dilation. Uh, Post-op, pre-op, things you have to do. Uh, the electrolysis down there, that was interesting. It really was. And see, these are things that support groups you talk about. So you know. When I came home from surgery, one of the ladies come to see me, a couple of them did, that was in the sport group. And I asked Deb, I said, how come you never talked about, because she had surgery the April, I think, one or two years prior to me. I, she went to Canada, I think. <laughs> and uh, she says, well, I didn't want to scare you. I said, Deb, you're a trans woman just like me. It's not going to scare you. You'd walk through fire and hell to be your true self. There's nothing that's going to scare you. I don't get your logic. You saying something and what you went through, at least you'd have an insight of what's going to happen. But see, nobody talks about it. And I'm hoping these videos that I make will help. And hopefully somebody doesn't hack my page and take them down again. 
Uh, Facebook had a ha hard time with this one last time. They wrote me up on it. Uh, hopefully they won't write me up this time because this is just about a surgical procedure. They said it was an explosive and sexual or something. No, it's not. It's about a medical procedure you have to do after surgery, after care. I mean, come on, people. It's nothing X-rated or anything. I'm just telling what a dilator is. It's a plastic device that goes up inside. The curve hits a G-spot, and you definitely can have orgasms. I can, anyway. Wicked. I mean, it's probably too TM TMI, but I function just like a girl because I am a girl. I am a woman. And it's really the best thing I ever did in my life to save my life to live this long. Um, I just wish the doctors would treat me better. They're, they they don't listen. It's like that hormone that I found out about. I'm starting my fifth month, I think, next month. I started HRT more than 16 years ago. This hormone should have been given with the HRT, progesterone. It uh, causes breast growth and it causes the milk, the mammogram, milk ducts, whatever you call them, to become active. You won't, well, I'm not supposed to produce milk. It keep me low enough. Um, it definitely has caused my breasts to grow in four months. But those two hormones need to be together, estrogen, and progesterone, they need to be together. You need to take one, and you, like I take the shots now and I take the pill, some people take it rectally, the progesterone from one lady, I watched a video translating, because when you take it and it goes in your stomach, you only get like 70, 80% out of the medicine because stomach acid kills it. So, but, and because I think they have shots, two of that, but I see the endo next week for the first time, this new endo, and I'm hoping it will make a world of difference. I hope she'll listen. I don't have that many years. I wanna be as much right when I leave as I can be. This is what cisgender people don't get. They, I guess when you're born with a right thing, you're not focused on trying to be who you truly are because you already are and I fought 45 years, then I came out. And then I fought with doctors for so long, nine years to get surgery, nine years, just so that I could put this up inside me and feel right. Because it didn't listen. They almost killed me. But this isn't, a, this isn't a walk through the park. Um, I've shown these devices, and I used to take breast forms. Like I did, the, I did a video on uh, when I did female impersonations. What I used, and the different bras, and the different forms. See that video's gone. Um, I've got in the attic. See if I can find them again. Um, this, when I've told some, some psychologists have had called me and had me meet with families. I did a talk at a school. But not like this. I talked about, I had them ask me questions. What it's like to be a woman or what, how I felt. They just asked me general questions. And uh, I answered them what I knew because I live it. Um, this definitely is the icing on the cake to finally be right. Um, a lot of people wonder why I don't want to be with a male, but remember, gender dysphoria, gender identity, is different than sexual orientation. They're two different categories. Some of my friends go with men that's had male to female surgery. Some of them go to women. So there was, back in 2000, there was 20 of us in the support group, there was only one female to male in the group. And it lasted maybe a year because people weren't paying to help. We had to pay $50 to rent the church for an hour in the basement to congregate on a Sunday. We could only have it one Sunday a month. And of course we didn't have it during the summer because everybody did their own thing. But fall through winter, we'd go there. But it only lasted one year and because people weren't help pay 
we number of people that come, we divide that $50 up and we put money in. Well, me and Doreen always put $5 each in so they'd be extra. So they'd build up a kitty so that if somebody didn't pay, there'd be money there. And there was others that put $5 in. So it'd only take 10 of us out of the almost 20. But not everybody would do it. It was only a few of us and it always fell short. So, but, so that ended the support group. There really needs to be a support group where I am so people can talk about this stuff and about electrolysis, about laser, psychologists. It's too bad we couldn't get different people come in and talk um, and about different hormones. And, uh, but I don't see it ever happening. I don't. It's too bad because education is a good tool. I had to learn all this on my own research. But I got here. I am where I'm at. I'm almost done with what few hairs come here. Um, when that's done, that's it's done. Um, is everything down below is done. Been done for years, over 13 years. Um, now I just have to do the routine maintenance to keep that. You have to clean inside once in a while because you put the stuff on that dilator and because it gets up in there. And once You don't do it very often because you don't want to screw up the, the cultures that's in there. Uh, I have gotten yeast infections in the past. Usually that's when my pH goes off or if I have to take an antibiotic for like sinus infection or an infection or some type of infection it throws my pH off and then I usually get a yeast infection. I do. You'll know it when you do. <laughs> you will, it's painful. Um, knock on wood, I haven't had one more than a year, I guess now. Maybe I finally got my, but see, these shots, I've only been on them, I'm on my third month of injections. I take my last shot Friday for three months, if it's the last Friday of the month, and then I'll start three more months. Knock on wood, I haven't gotten a yeast infection. I do get wicked night sweats. I really haven't got hot flashes, kind of warm. Like right now I got my hair tied up because I am warm, but it's kind of muggy. Um, I do get night sweats, and I think that's from the progesterone that I take at night. You always take that at night when you go to bed. Because it has a, it doesn't have a sedative, but it activates something in the brain. Listen to a doctor this morning. It activates something in the brain and produces that chemical you need, which causes the breast growth and stuff and other hormonal things. And that's what makes you sleep. And it activates that. And I sleep anywhere from four to six hours really sound. Um, when I wake up, I'm very jittery, like I've drank 100 cups of coffee because I can't have caffeine because I'm epileptic. So I have to be careful. I can't have any histamines because they, um, they make me jittery because of the epilepsy, I guess. I haven't had a seizure since 83, so that's good. And I've been off Dilantin for years. Um, but I've learned what to eat, what not to eat, other than my colon issue now that they've found again. Um, but... Please take care. Do everything the right way. There is no shortcuts. None. Don't think you can take more hormones to speed it up. You might jeopardize your life. In this, sometimes less is better, longer. It is. It doesn't pay to think, oh, well, instead of taking one milliliter or take six milligrams of the pills, I'll take seven or I'll take 1.8, eighth more of estrogen injection, that might kill you. You gotta do this right. You gotta get a really good endocrinologist, get a good doctor, a therapist, a psychologist, and get your HRT. You have to go off hormones. I had to go off from January, well actually December, November to April, so six months, I guess. See, the six months uh, a year you have to go off HRT before you can have this surgery. 
because you don't want a blood clot. That's why they um, tell you to go off HRT. That's why you can't smoke, drink, or any of that. Smoking's really bad. That'll definitely cause you to have a blood clot at some point. Um, just don't, don't smoke, don't drink, don't use any recreational drugs. Just don't do any of that. Do it as clean as you can. You're going to have the least trouble. Okay? If you truly love yourself and care, you will clean up your act. I did. Big time. Many years prior. So if I was going to have anything in life, I had to quit all that nonsense. I wasn't going to do any more of that. I wanted to focus on having a good life. And then, of course, I tried to hide this. But it's well worth it. It really is. If you truly are who you say you are, this is a walk through the park. It really is. It's uh, it's worth it. It really is. I got this case. Soul Sauce is where I got it from. Um, I take this one. I leave it in the bathroom. And I wash it with uh, a red soap that the hospital uses. I got a pump bottle in there. Hyper, hyper Cleanse or something it's called. It's red. really smells good. I had to wash in that before I had GRS. I'd have to wash, bathe in that, wash my hair. Because it, it doesn't suds up, it just cleans. And I had to suds up and everything. And uh, But Soul Sauce is where these come from. All four of them are 200. And uh, they're more individual. But I think they gave me the first two after surgery. I'm not sure. I know definitely one they did because I had to do it every... Every three hours, the uh, dilation for 20 minutes. And you don't just, you just don't put it in there and leave it because it will get stuck. You got to turn it and move it in and out and turn it because anything that's stagnant is going to try to heal to. It will the rest of your life because it's, uh, it's injured tissue. It's like you cut your arm. You put a, um, a suture on it, or whatever they call those things, those little steri strip things, and eventually that heals. That's what that's going to try to do down there. And you got to do this. Don't skip it. Don't, or you'll lose depth. I don't know about the opening, but you will lose depth because way inside it's going to start healing and closing because the vagina... On this end, is open some. You can see inside a ways. But as this thing goes up inside, it's going gonna, it's gonna to open that tissue up. It's going to keep trying to expand the tissue until you get to your depth on your mark. And then you put it in there and then you just turn it. Then every once in a while, move it back and forth because that moves the lube around so it doesn't try to, the tissue doesn't try to grip to this. Um, other than that, that's... Pretty much to do with aftercare. Uh, it's different than the other video that I did. I did in my bedroom. I wish somebody hadn't hacked my page. I lost all my videos. Um, may God bless you. Dr. Christine again. If you Google uh, Christopher McGinn, Lieutenant Commander, you can see where there's a video they show where he was in the Navy. He was a flight surgeon or something. He was way up anyway. He got out and transitioned. Yep, he did. The video's really good about his history. Uh, her history now, Chris, Christine. Uh, she's a blonde, beautiful lady. Um, she ended up, I don't know if they, yeah, they did get married. Her and a state trooper, I can't remember her name. Lisa, I think her name was. Uh, tall, thin lady. And Chris, Christine, she froze her sperm before she had reassignment surgery, so if she ever got with somebody, she could have it inseminated in her partner. And that's what they did, and they had twin boys, I think. I got a picture in there. They sent me a card one year of the uh, two boys. Um, I think it's twin boys. It's in that picture. But, uh, no, look up Pat Papillon Center, I think it's called. P-A-L-L-I-O, something like that. If you Google uh, Dr. Christine McGinn, it will come up. She's one of them that's... She doesn't like some of the other I ones. I don't understand. Yeah, in media all the time. 
she's she's just a sweetheart. She does a good job. Everybody that's gone's been very happy that I know of. Um, but do what's best for you. Don't hide. Life's too short. This is so much better. I'm not fighting you with it anymore. I mean, I get up, I put the right clothes on, do a little bit of makeup. I have to enhance it because of the camera to pick it up. But it just feels natural now. It always did, even before surgery, I just had to hide it. Now I don't have to hide it. I'm me. It's just the way it is. It's all woman. Yep, female, her, she. It's best pronouns ever. Uh, and it feels right. You will too. Don't try to fight the demon. It doesn't work. It just makes you sicker. So may God bless you. Um, I do have a Facebook page. It's under Rachel Ganthner. Um, you can message me. Ask me questions. I'll try to answer them in some of these videos. If you got questions, I'm willing to answer. I mean, I've been down the mill hard. I figure 20 years, 21 years now. So just be safe in the process. Never buy hormones off the street. Never buy hormones from somebody else. You have to get your male hormones down in the female range for estrogen to work. I'm serious. You do. To work right, because the more estrogen you take, the more you endanger your life. Less is better. And let the course run over years. Puberty doesn't happen overnight. It happens over years. It's like I'm antsy because this progesterone they given me should have been given to me 16 years ago when I started estrogen. Doctors dropped the ball. Now I want to make up for the 16 years I lost. Yes, I've gained a cup size in four months. I'm shocked. Um, I'm hoping the next four months I gain another one. <laughs> then I'll be, I'll actually be bigger than a C. Uh, but my stature, my body structure, I want the definition and they feel good. I mean, everything feels, it feels like it's supposed to. I know cisgender people don't get it. A lot of women hate the thing. But when you were made to live as a boy for 40 years and know you had the wrong anatomy as you learned, this was necessary to save my life. It was the only way to save my life, is a surgery. And I wish any of you that have it done God be with you. You're in my prayers. It can be rough. It depends how you tolerate pain. I have such a high pain threshold. That's what the doctor says. I end up in trouble because I don't know pain. See, I was paralyzed in 91. And I kept pushing myself. Then all of a sudden, I couldn't walk no more. Went to the doctor and then they took four discs out. I had seven. They took removed four. And they glued my spine back together. And then... I have three behind my heart and I have two in my neck. These, the only way they can repair these is from the front and they take the heart out. So that hasn't been done. I have a lot of, sometimes I have motor skill issues and some of that comes from my neck ones. Uh, my nubs and my spine are all growing together, but I made it through this. See, they almost didn't do my surgery because of all my problems. Uh, I was a very high risk, but I got through it. God's blessed me that way. My dad did. He watched his son become his daughter. And we really had a good time talking. Because he talked to me. It was like night and day. Now that I'm his daughter, he talked about his childhood. He talked about mom. He talked about all these things. When I was his son, it was just all business. Because we had a family business. That's all I ever heard. Never heard anything else. We didn't do like I guess most fathers and sons do. Because all I ever did is work since I was six years old. And... It just is so weird to come home. And it was like, he totally changed. He talked to me about so many things. I'm glad I had those few months with him before he died. Because I had surgery in April and he died that fall on January. But at least he got to know his daughter. And I got to talk to him as his daughter. And 
it made a world of difference. But God bless. I love you all. Um, remember, send me messages, whatever. If you got questions, I'll answer them on anything to do with this. I want to try to save some lives and some... Just make it... Just do it safe, really. There's no quick fix. It takes years. It does. I figure I'm 20 years. And four months ago, I started the progesterone, and that started making my breasts even grow more. Estrogen will get them a little ways, but it needs a progesterone to really boom, go. So may God bless you. I'll see you hopefully again. Who knows? Um, it's in God's hands. Bye-bye. Be safe.